If you study the Great War long enough, patterns emerge. Moments where ingenuity mattered just as much as firepower. One of the most overlooked examples is water. Clean, safe water kept armies alive as much as rations or ammunition. Yet most people don't know the frontline method soldiers used when supply chains collapsed, trenches flooded, and entire battalions went days without proper sanitation. Before the age of compact filters and iodine tablets, soldiers improvised. They adapted old field manuals, borrowed from medical corps practices, and revived techniques that pre-industrial communities had used for centuries. And the most surprising part is this. Many of these methods still work today, and survivalists continue to rely on updated versions of them. That's why this guide exists. If you're watching on Echoes of Survival, you're here because you want more than simple trivia. You want forgotten knowledge that still has value in the modern world. So let's get into the methods frontline troops depended on, the science behind them, and how you can replicate them right now with real-world reliability. The method of sedimentation and controlled settling saved more soldiers than any medical unit ever recorded. Trench water was thick with clay, soil, manure runoff, petrol residues, and rotting organic matter. Soldiers learned quickly that you cannot purify murky water without first letting gravity do its work. The standard was simple scoop water into a container and let it sit long enough for solids to settle at the bottom, sometimes for half a day. What makes sedimentation so effective is that it removes the majority of suspended particles that otherwise clog filters or reduce the efficiency of disinfectants. Modern survivalists can still use this exact approach today by collecting water in a pot, bucket or canteen cup, leaving it undisturbed and then carefully pouring off the clear upper layer into another container. In some WWI diaries, soldiers strengthened the process by lining a tin with a cloth to catch floating debris as they decanted. It's basic, but still essential, because every purification method that follows works better after sedimentation. The field expedient charcoal filtration method became a lifeline when medical units couldn't reach the trenches. Long before charcoal filters were commercialised, soldiers built makeshift ones from burnt wood taken straight from cooking fires. The technique was taught in British and French field manuals. Crush hardwood charcoal, layer it with sand and cloth inside a can, and let water drip through slowly. Charcoal absorbs certain organic compounds and improves taste, which mattered in trench life where chemical contamination was common. To apply this today, all you need is a metal can, a piece of cloth, some sand or gravel, and crushed charcoal. Pour water through slowly, never forcing it. It won't eliminate pathogens on its own, but it reduces turbidity and improves the effectiveness of boiling or chemical treatment afterward. Even modern off-grid preppers use DIY charcoal columns when store-bought filters break or run out of replacement cartridges. The boiling protocols perfected by field medics were strict and far more disciplined than people assume. Most people know that boiling water kills pathogens, but World War I Medical Corps treated it as a non-negotiable procedural step. Reports from the Royal Army Medical Corps show that water was required to reach a rolling boil for at least one full minute, sometimes longer, at high altitudes or in contaminated zones. Soldiers boiled water in mess tins, artillery shell cases, and even unused fuel cans. What made the method reliable wasn't just the boiling itself, but the emphasis on avoiding recontamination. Water was stored in covered containers, never dipped into with dirty cups, and always reheated 
if left sitting too long. In a survival setting, you can follow the same discipline. Bring the water to a full, vigorous boil for one minute. Let it cool naturally while covered. Store it in a clean, sealed vessel. The method is timeless, needs no equipment, and remains the gold standard when you have fire and a metal container. The chemical purification tablets developed during the First World War were, well, pretty crude, but they paved the way for the modern survival tablets we know today. One forgotten innovation of the Great War, actually, was the early use of chlorine compounds. German forces, for example, used what they called chlorine bleaching powder in their field kits, while the British introduced what would eventually become the predecessor to those halazone tablets you might have heard of. Now, back then, the tablets were unstable and had a really strong chemical taste, but the principle is honestly exactly the same as what hikers still use. Chlorine neutralizes biological contaminants, even in cold water. The practical takeaway here is straightforward. If you want a purification backup that doesn't need fire, you carry a modern equivalent. Sodium dichlorose ocyanurate tablets. They dissolve quickly, store reliably, and do what frontline soldiers struggle to manage with those early powders. And if you're ever recreating the World War I method for educational or experimental use, the closest modern equivalent is just adding a few drops of unscented household bleach per liter of water, letting it stand for about 30 minutes, and storing it in a clean container. Always a last resort, of course, but it's historically accurate and, well, it works. The cloth filtration method that infantry units relied on is, honestly, still one of the fastest and simplest clarifying steps out there. This wasn't filtration in the way we think of it today, but it really mattered. Soldiers would filter water through their shirts, bandages, or any woven fabric they had on hand, just to get rid of insects, bits of straw, mud clumps, and any surface debris before trying anything else. It didn't make the water safe, not by a long shot, but it made it workable. A survivalist today can do the same thing, using a shimmer, a bandana, or even just a tightly woven t-shirt. Fold it several times, secure it over a pot or bottle, and pour your water slowly through. When you combine this with sedimentation and boiling, you get a three-stage system that, honestly, remains reliable just about anywhere on Earth. The reason these methods still matter is because, well, every one of them is equipment-independent and field-tested under the worst conditions you can imagine. Frontline soldiers back then couldn't rely on supply trucks, electricity, or any sort of intact infrastructure. And... You know, modern survivalists face pretty similar uncertainties, whether it's during disasters or out on remote expeditions. Whether you're using sedimentation to clear river water, charcoal filtration to improve the taste, boiling to guarantee safety, or chemical treatment as a backup, you're really drawing from the same toolkit that kept entire divisions functioning back in 1916. If this deep dive into World War I forgotten water purification methods that still work today brought you something new, well, make sure you subscribe, share this video, and help bring more people into Echoes of Survival. This channel thrives because of history buffs like you, folks who care about forgotten knowledge and the lessons it still offers.